Well, we have here on the left side of your screen is a green sea turtle, and on the right side of the screen is a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. And I'm just going to put some gloves on. You'll notice our staff and volunteers are all wearing gloves. And that's just for personal protection. Sea turtles can carry something called salmonella, which can make you a little bit sick, so we like to just stay safe. So the first thing you'll probably notice is their colors are very different. Uh, you want to shoot from the top down so they can see? Yeah, perfect. Um, this animal here, this is a green sea turtle, and you can see how very different. He's got sort of these, um, I call them sun blazes on the shell there. They're really more of these stripes. Um, and he's a little bit more green in nature. That's not a, really how they got their name. They got their name from the color of their fat. But then if we pan over here to this animal sitting next to him, this is a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. You'll notice how dark that animal is. This animal, the Kemp's Ridley, also has these ridges here. You can see are fairly dramatic. Um, you can show them from the side a little bit. They'll be able to see those ridges a little better. Can everybody see that okay? Mario called him Batman. Batman? Who said that? Come Margo. on. Somebody named Margo. Margo. Thank you, Margo. He does look a little bit like that. He looks like he's masked almost. Um, you, can, you can also see if we um, pan in a little bit here on his face. You'll notice that he has a very sharp beak. Can everybody see that? See how he has a little pointed hook there on, on the underside of his beak? Go Emily says bit. we definitely see the beak. Just stay where you are now. Yep, perfect. OK, great. All right, now we're going to lift up the green turtle, and let's go over to him. And you'll notice he does not have that same sharp hook on the underside of his beak. The green turtle, I'm actually going to lift it. So yeah, there you go, has a rounded beak and a serrated jaw. And they have these differences really based on the foods that they eat. The green sea turtle right now does eat some meat, he eats some squid and herring, some fishes. Uh, but as he gets older and older, they'll become exclusively herbivores. So that means he's only going to eat vegetation. Whereas the Kemp's Ridley has that hook on his beak because he's going to be eating crustaceans. So he needs to crush through crab shells and things like that. Does anybody have any questions before we keep going? It's time to type their questions in the chat room. OK. Yes, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat room right now, and we're going to keep going. I'm going to have you lift up a little bit. We're going to look at the um, lower shell of the turtles, which is called the plasteron. There's a top shell, which is called the carapace. And that's this one here. And this is a hard structure. This is bone. And then go ahead just gently. And then underneath, this is called the plastron. You can see some differences here as well. The, the Ridley on this side of the screen, you'll notice he has some dark coloration on his flippers. And just a very different shell here. I know these animals are very active. And then this is the green sea turtle. And he has a very smooth shell, all one color. And very, very few colorations on the rear flippers in the bottom. Margo asked if the green sea turtle is healthier. Margo asked if the green sea turtle is healthier. Uh, not necessarily. They all came in from something called hypothermia, which um, was often referred to in the media as cold stunning for these animals. They've both been here about the same amount of time, uh, and they've been getting therapy. The green sea, sea turtle is, it looks a little bit bulkier, so he's got a little bit more weight on him. But the Kemp's Ridley turtle there on the right side of your screen is also pretty pretty hefty and doing quite well. Good question. Ask if anyone else has a question. Does anybody else have a question they want to ask? You can just go ahead and type it right into your chat room. Do you want to try to do a close up eyes? Sure, if you can. I'm going to try to We're going to zoom in just so you can see their eyes a little bit better. And you can actually see the coloration. The green sea turtle has these individual little scoots on their head. And the Kemp's Ridley does as well, but they don't show up as well because they don't have these nice white borders that you see on the green sea turtle. And there you go. Now you're looking at the Kemp's Ridley again. Yeah, that's a great shot. You can also see the hook in, the, uh, in his beak. You'll notice a little blemish on the, uh, it's on the left side of your screen, but it's the right side of the turtle's neck. That's actually a bit of a scar. The turtle came in with a, a significant wound there, and that's 
that's just uh, part of the healing process. Eventually, a lot of that will go away. There'll be a little bit of a scar left, but won't be quite as, as uh, visual as what we see there. So how much these guys weigh? Well, actually, one of them needs to weight. This one was 2.9. Kilograms. 2.9 kilograms. So there's a math question right there if anybody wants to uh, figure out how much is 2.9 kilograms in pounds. We'll let you guys do the math. Somebody can give us the answer if you want. What, what do they do every day? Like, what's a regular treat like for these guys? Excellent question. Somebody asked what do they do every day? What's a regular day like um, here in the, in the sea turtle hospital? And generally, when we come in in the morning, we get here pretty early, we like to clean the tanks first and uh, just sort of check on everybody. And then we'll go through and we'll do treatments. And part of the treatment regime is just taking out the animals. They don't all come out every day. It depends on their treatment schedule. And it depends on what sort of wounds or injuries they might have, or perhaps it's an infection and they need an antibiotic. It depends on the frequency of those medications. So, if they come out, they'll get a full exam, we'll check their eyes, we look in their mouth, we check all their systems, and we look for any, you know, uh, things that might develop while they're here. Maybe they came in with something that's been sort of dormant or hidden, and as they are here and they're getting healthier, sometimes smaller things uh, might become more apparent once they've been here for a little while. And they all get uh, a weight as part of their exam so that we can monitor their health that way. And then once the treatments are done, we'll go ahead and do a, a pretty big feed. And some of the common foods that we feed are squid. Seems to be a, a favorite here among all the sea turtles. Uh, we also feed herring, capelin, and uh, on occasion, shrimp. Now, also earlier I mentioned the green sea turtles. That's this guy here doing a little bit of a squiggle dance. Uh, they'll also get vegetation so we bring in a lot of uh, different a variety of greens so lettuce um, romaine things like that and we submerge that in a little tray that we have and they will start uh, to graze on that so no questions yet no more questions is there any qu feel free to type them in as we go we'll just sort of keep going through our turtles Margo asks, uh, do they share the same native area and ocean that are from different parts? That's a great question. Margo asks, do they share the same area of the ocean or are they from different parts? The Kemp's Ridley, there we go, yeah, it's coming into your screen now. The Kemp's Ridley, those turtles are born on really only one area in the world, and that's Rancho Nuevo, Mexico. So that's a very localized, very, um, I guess it's the term for it is called site fidelity, where they will go back and nest at the same beach they were born at. So there's really just a, a very focused nesting for uh, that species. The green sea turtle can be found in a variety of other areas. At least um, in this part of the world, we would see this animal nesting off the coast of Florida. I don't know if there's any folks from Florida here on the webcam today or tuning into the webcam today, but uh, also uh, Wait, B Bermuda. I gotta turn up the volume. Okay, sorry, we're turning up the volume. Okay, so repeat that thing about Florida again. Oh, okay, uh, I'll repeat the part about Florida. It sounds like a few people missed that, but uh, the green sea turtle can be found nesting in Florida and also around Bermuda. They're both from warm water though, so that's a pretty easy, easy thing to remember. So uh, temperate or tropical waters even. Alex asked if they have playtime together. <laughs> Good question. Alex asked if they have playtime together. Um, and the answer to that is no. We do tend to keep the species separated, uh, just so there's no aggression between them. Um, but they also eat very different foods, so it's easier for us to maintain their appropriate diets uh, and their nutrition if we keep them separated by species. Great question. Uh, no other questions yet? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more Kemp's Ridley we're going to bring out for you today. Adam's going to go ahead and put one of these, this little guy back. And we're just going to. Yes. Oh, great, right. Sorry. We're going to bring out a, a, a larger Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. We're going to show you the size difference between the two Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. Margo asked if they're social at all. Ah, Margot asked if these are social animals at all. 
And uh, at this part of their life stage, not really. They'd really be more um, of what we call loners. When they get to be breeding age, you will see them entering breeding colonies uh, and going back to the nesting beaches. But at this point in their life, uh, they're really not that social. So I think what we'll try to do now is uh, maybe lift the camera up from the top and uh, pan down so that you can see the size difference. Can you move them together closer a little bit? Yep. Okay, so there you can see the smaller of the two Ridleys on the left and then the larger one on the right. Um, Hold on a sec, I gotta fix the sound. Okay. And also, you might notice that they have these little white markings on their shell. We're working on the sounds, we're gonna increase that right now, but you know. Ask if that's better. Is that better? Does that sound better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, great. Thank you for your responses. I'm going to show you what that looks like over here. You'll see a little white mark there. And that's the remnants of a number. Because we had so many turtles come in this season, we've had to paint numbers on their shells. So while this animal's out today, Adam's going to actually repair that number so that you can read it a little bit better. But we always put two numbers on. So you'll see on this side, there's a number there. So we know that this is animal number 6-1. So we'll go ahead and fix his number for later. And each animal has a number like that painted on them. And that just allows us to make sure that the right medication goes into the right animal and that, that each animal is getting the right nutrition. So I'm going to show you both again. So there you got a good shot of them side by side. How much older is the larger one? Uh, good question. Somebody asked how much older the larger turtle is than the smaller one. And the answer to that is we really have no way to age sea turtles currently. There are some scientists working on it, but we'd have to guess that probably the animal on the right might be three, roughly three years of age, and the animal on the left probably about two. And those are age estimates based on some science that has been done. It's not just a, a guess. It's, it's based on some science, but um, it's, a, it's a difficult process to age these animals. And reptiles have a very long time. I'll ask if anyone else has a question. Okay, go ahead, keep typing your questions in there because we can see them as they come up on the screen and I'll go ahead and repeat them. How do you tell if they're male or female? Excellent question. Somebody asked, how do you Wait, tell... Wait, hold on a second. Here, let me have yeah, grab that. Keep the volume up again. It keeps it knocking down. Okay, okay. okay, there. Is that better? Can you hear me? The volume keeps uh, turning down a little bit for some reason. Uh, some people said it's stuck on. Say, can you guys hear? Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, and it says it's better. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so the question was, how can you tell if this is a male or a female? And the answer is we really can't. The only way to, to determine that for sure would be to actually do a procedure called a laparoscopy. And it would be a surgical procedure where you'd have to insert a little, almost like a little camera so that you could actually look uh, at the animal's organs. Um, so at this point, we wouldn't go ahead and do any sort of surgical procedure of that nature just to figure out the gender of the animal? Very good question. Whoever asked that should get extra points. All right, sound is back again. All right, so I think our sound is back again. So if, if any of you missed these, the answers to these questions, go ahead and, and uh, email us again, and I'll, I can repeat the answer. All right, sound is back. Great. Good. Wow, there's a lot of people logged on. This is fantastic. Oh, Liz, Liz is on from the aquarium. Oh, great. <laughs> so, can we download a recording afterwards? Say, yeah, it'll be on the blog afterwards. Okay, somebody just asked if you can download a recording of this program. On, uh, and the answer to that is yes. After the program, it will appear on the blog, and you'll be able to, to download it. And uh, how big do these guys get on the foreground that counts in the greens? Another great question. Wanna, somebody asked... Somebody asked how big these animals get uh, when they're full grown. And uh, what you're looking at, again, this is the Kemp's Ridley. This is the most endangered sea turtle in the world. Both of these two turtles in front of you are Kemp's Ridleys. And they get to be about the size of probably a, a car tire, maybe a truck tire. They are the smallest of the sea turtles in the, in the world. Uh, whereas you have your leatherback sea turtle, which uh, we do not have those here in captivity. 
that would actually be the size of the entire car, not just the size of the tire. So that gives you some idea of the difference in size of the different sea turtle species. Great question. Myrtle's a green one. Yes, uh, for those of you who have been to the New England Aquarium, uh, Myrtle is a green sea turtle. Somebody just asked what species Myrtle was, and she is also a, a very large turtle. And that's common for the green sea turtle species. I'm going to show you the, the green again over here. This, this again is a juvenile green. So at some point in Myrtle's history, she was only this big. <laughs> just tiny. So no one's asking a question, but you can say how many people have seen Myrtle at the aquarium. Yeah, how many people have seen Myrtle at the aquarium? Can you uh, go ahead and type your answers in the chat room, and we'll be able to see them here. And uh, over in the other room, they asked, what are the biggest threats faced by these turtles? Great question. Somebody just asked, what are the biggest threats faced by these turtles? And unfortunately, right now, at this time, it's probably human activities. And that is um, probably the biggest threat right now is just some of our methods of, of catching fish, or certain fishes, uh, actually really put these animals at risk. And, it, maybe the biggest one is uh, is the shrimping industry, uh, and they are working on some modifications to their equipment that will help reduce the uh, number of turtles that tend to get trapped in those fishing nets. So there's a lot of work being done to try to reduce what's called the human interaction part, so that uh, these animals don't get taken accidentally into those nets. Great question. So the oh, yeah, hold on. We, Kurt's just doing a quick exam on this turtle, so I'm going to bring it right over here and let you see. And again, we talked earlier about when they come out, what do we look for? And what he's doing now is... Sorry, our sound is... There we go, okay. So what Kurt's doing now is just examining the flippers making sure he doesn't see any unusual bumps or bruises or uh, sometimes they'll have these lesions that will surface after they've been here a while so we just like to pull them out and uh, and do a, an exam just like when you go to the doctor your doctor sort of looks you over they check your eyes they check your you know in your mouth to make sure everything's all systems go i should say there we go all right, so you can see how active these animals are. Robin's got a great pole on him while Kurt examines. Cheryl is protesting a little bit, but that's normal. At this point, it should. I'll ask how many teeth turtles have. Oh, somebody asked a great question. How many teeth do turtles have? Wait, I'm sorry. All right, go for it. All right, so the question was how many teeth do turtles have? And the answer is none. I'm going to zoom in here on the beak again. Uh, again, so they'll use this beak as a crushing tool, so they don't really need teeth. So they'll use that, you can see the hook, there it is, right there, see that hook? They'll use that to crush through a, any sort of crustacean, like crabs, horseshoe crabs, things like that. Uh, so they don't actually have teeth. Very good question. Ask if the sound is better now. Is the sound better now? We're having a few problems with the sound. I think we've got it, is that better? Yes, it's better. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, so we've only got a few more minutes. Does anybody have any questions they want to uh, go ahead and ask? One of these guys needs a weight, right? Uh, they don't have their weights. Oh, they do? Let's do one anyway, yeah. If we, can we bring the uh, scale right here? Yeah. Someone asked how, uh, how many channels do we have and how long do they have? Okay, a couple more questions coming across here. Somebody asked how many turtles do we have? We have 42 turtles currently here at the Aquarium and the Animal Care Center. And this was our second busiest year on record. Oh, hold on, I'm just gonna catch Adam getting a wait for you here. So again, when these turtles come out, there we go, you can see right there, he weighs 3.05 kilograms. Excellent, nice. You can see he's on a little portable scale there. Um, Catherine and Dale asked, do they eat jellyfish? Okay, Catherine and Dale just asked if they eat jellyfish. Uh, there are some species of sea turtles that do eat jellyfish. These two species.
species that you've seen in front of you that's not really their most common uh, food item or prey source. They may eat them, but um, it, it's not really their most not really their most common food source for these two. The leatherback sea turtles exclusively eat jellyfish. Great question. Um, and how is the aquarium helping with the egg harvesting of chimps, ridleys, I guess? Okay, uh, next question was from Margo, and she wanted to know how is the aquarium helping with the uh, egg harvesting of the Kemp's Ridleys? And I'm not sure if you mean uh, in regards to the oil spill. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, let me just show you a Ridley here because I've got a pan on a green turtle. There we go. Okay, so that's your Kemp's Ridley again. And uh, right now, at least the stranding program is not currently involved in the egg harvesting of the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. We do respond, because we're a medical unit, we respond to a lot of sea turtle emergencies. For example, um, Dr. Ennis and I went down during the oil spill and helped take care of turtles. You can find a lot of those blogs um, in the archive section of our blogs. And also, uh, Adam Kennedy and I went down to Florida last winter to help. They had a cold sunning event there. Uh, so we do help in many other ways. We just uh, are not directly involved right now with the egg harvesting. Great question. Uh, how many eggs do they lay? How many eggs do they lay? Excellent question. When uh, sea turtles come up to nest, they uh, lay a, what's called a clutch. And generally, it, it can range, but generally it's about 110 eggs per clutch. And they can actually nest several times a season, so they don't necessarily only lay one clutch of eggs per season. They may lay up to two or three or more. We have 14 people in the room. That's the most so far. It's kind of cool. All right. Any other? Well, I'm going to get this guy. He's just finishing up his exam. He's pretty active. He's basically letting us know he's done. He's ready to go back in the pool. Do you want to get them being put back in the pool? Yes, we certainly can. Uh, we can. They want you to repeat uh, how many eggs are in the clutch. Hold on, i got to turn this on. Okay. Okay. All right, there we go. Sorry. Uh, several of you missed uh, how many eggs are in a clutch. And generally, the answer to that is around 110. Is, uh, you know, that, it can give or take. It can be 115. It can be 90. Um, but generally, the average is about 100 to 110 eggs per clutch. Great question. I'm surprised nobody has asked us yet how long can these animals stay out of water. So I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, <laughs> because they're reptiles, uh, they can actually stay out for quite some time. When they first strand at the beginning of, or the early part of the season, uh, due to the hypothermia, they'll stay out overnight. Sometimes they're out of water for a few days. We will give them short swims, but uh, they don't necessarily have to be in water all the time. Yeah, they can never. Kenny asked how long can they stay out of water. Um, and then Paul asked, what is the survival rate for a clutch? Oh, excellent question. Still having, there we go, we're still having some volume problems. But uh, Paul just asked a great question, and that is, what is the survival rate for a clutch? So again, if there's about 100 to 110 eggs per clutch, only one in a thousand of the eggs will make it to adulthood and actually produce its own uh, offspring. So that's not a very good percentage rate. Let me just get back on the turtle for you. There we go. Um, which is why probably these animals are endangered. Great, great question. So we have three minutes. Do you want to do that, putting the turtle back in? Yeah, so we have just a few minutes left. So we're going to go ahead and put these turtles back in. And we'll show you what it looks like when they go back in the tanks. Mm -hmm. 